In today's video, we're going to cover everything you need to know about isoelectric focusing for the MCAT. The purpose of isoelectric focusing is to separate different proteins based on their charge. To understand how this technique works, we first need to quickly review a couple of other topics, the charged amino acids, how pH can affect charge, and electrolytic cells. Let's start with the charged amino acids. In total, there are five charged amino acids, two negatively charged acidic residues, specifically aspartate and glutamate, and three positively charged basic residues, lysine, arginine, and histidine. These amino acids are classified as charged because at or near physiological pH, their side chains will carry either a positive or a negative charge. Although histidine is typically neutral at physiological pH, we will be including it in our list of the charged amino acids today because it will impact how different proteins behave during isoelectric focusing. Here, pH is super important because protonation and deprotonation is what causes the side chains to be charged in the first place. For example, lysine is a basic residue, and since bases accept protons, it will be protonated at physiological pH, causing it to have a positive charge. On the other hand, aspartic acid is negatively charged because at physiological pH, it is in its B protonated form. However, if we change the solution pH, we can change the protonation status of these residues. For example, if we put aspartic acid in a profoundly acidic solution, it would become protonated, lose its negative charge, and become neutral. Isoelectric focusing takes advantage of this fact by setting up a gel with a consistent pH gradient, where one side of the gel gets progressively more acidic and the other side gets progressively more basic. A current is then run through the gel forming an electrolytic cell with a positively charged anode and a negatively charged cathode. Regardless of whether a cell is electrolytic or galvanic, the anode will always attract anions and the cathode will always attract cations, hence their names. In this case, the anode is positioned at the acidic side, which you can remember because they both start with A, acid anode, while the cathode is positioned at the basic side. If we place a positively charged peptide at the center of the gel, then it would migrate to the cathode as this peptide migrates towards the cathode, the gel is also becoming more and more basic. And eventually, the basic residues within the peptide would become deprotonated, changing those residues from positively charged to neutral. Once the peptide is net neutral, it would stop migrating in the gel since it would no longer be electrostatically attracted to the cathode's negative charge. The pH at which these peptides become net neutral is called the pi or isoelectric point, hence the name of this technique, isoelectric focusing. So even if we placed multiple different positively charged peptides into a gel, they would migrate different distances based on their PIs with the more positively charged peptides migrating further to the cathode side because they have higher PIs. Essentially, the more positively charged the peptide, the higher its PI, and the more negatively charged, the lower its PI. For example, let's say we had the following gel. In this gel, all of the samples were initially placed in a central well at pH 7, then allowed to run on the gel. Their final positions as seen here tells us a lot about their charges. For example, the dark and light blue samples have migrated towards the cathode, meaning they must have been positively charged at neutral pH. Remember, the cathode attracts cations. Between the two, the dark blue sample must be more positively charged because it migrated further than the lighter blue sample. Said another way, the dark blue sample has a higher pi than the light blue sample. The yellow sample didn't move at all and is still right at a pH of 7. This means the sample must be neutral. Since it wasn't charged originally, it couldn't be attracted to either charged terminal. While the red sample must be negatively charged at neutral pH since it migrated towards the anode side of the gel, again, remember the anode attracts anions. Now that we have an overview of isoelectric focusing, let's look at a couple of questions on this topic. Our first question asks, a mutant and wild type version of a peptide were run through isoelectric focusing. While both the mutant and wild type peptide traveled towards the cathode, it was found that the mutant peptide traveled further from its starting position. Which of the following mutations could account for this difference? Let's begin by breaking this question down a bit and put it into the context of what we just learned. First, we know that these peptides are cations because they migrated to the cathode side of the gel. From there, we also know that the mutant traveled further towards the cathode side, and therefore it must have a higher PI or more positively charged amino acids to begin with. All of our answer choices are in mutation notation, which lists the original amino acid, followed by its position, and then finally what it was changed to. So we would look for an answer that either adds a positively charged residue or removes a negatively charged one. Only answer choice D fits this, making it correct since this answer denotes a mutation that eliminated an aspartic acid residue and replaced it with a lysine residue in the mutated form of the protein. Answer A, on the other hand, flips this idea around and replaces a positively charged arginine with a negatively charged glutamic acid, making it incorrect since this would lower the PI. Answer choices B and C are also incorrect, and these mutations would have very little effect on the PI because they change uncharged residues to other uncharged residues. 
Now that we've answered this question, let's go ahead and look at another. This question states, four distinct tripeptides were run through isoelectric focusing as shown on the left. Which of the following correctly pairs the tripeptide with its location? To answer this question, we will need to figure out where the cathode and anode are so we can determine the charges on our peptide sequences and line them up. So long as you can remember an acid anode, then you will always know how to label the anode and cathode based on the pH or vice versa. In this case, the red side of the gel is the anode since it is acidic at a pH of 1, and the blue side of the gel is the cathode since it is basic at a pH of 14. This means peptide D is anionic at neutral pH since the anode attracts anions, while peptide B is cationic since the cathode attracts cations. Scanning through our answer choices, we can see that only answer choice A and D had peptide D as a negatively charged or anionic, so we can eliminate both B and C since we know peptide D was originally an anion since it was found near the anode side of this gel. From there, only answer choice A lists peptide B as cationic, so it must be the correct answer since we know that peptide B is cationic at neutral pH, while answer choice D has a neutral peptide listed as peptide B instead, making it wrong. In summary, we learned that isoelectric focusing is used to separate proteins based on their charge or isoelectric point. It is carried out by establishing a consistent pH gradient across a gel and placing the sample at or near neutral pH. The anode side of the gel is positively charged because this is an electrolytic cell and positioned at the acidic side of the gel, acid anode, while the cathode, which is negatively charged, is positioned at the basic side of the gel. Anions or negatively charged molecules are always attracted to the anode, so they will migrate to that side until they are protonated by the gel and rendered net neutral at which point in time they will stop moving, while cations or positively charged molecules are always attracted to the cathode and will migrate that way until deprotonated and rendered net neutral at which point in time they will also stop moving. The PI or initial starting charge of the peptide affects how far that peptide will migrate in the gel. The larger the PI or the more positively charged it is, the further that peptide will move to the cathode side, and the same is true for the anode, except here it corresponds with smaller PIs or more negatively charged peptides. As always, if you found this video useful, make sure to like and subscribe and share this with anybody else who might be taking the test.